Heidi ho, it's Andrew again, and today I would like to teach you how to find the zeros and give the multiplicity of each zero of the following function, 4 times x raised to the fifth minus 12 times x raised to the fourth plus 9x cubed. So, the first thing we have to do is to find the zeros, right? We have to remember that the zeros are basically another term for x-intercept. Now, I went through a very painstakingly in detail process um, about how to find x-intercepts and zeros of like 20 or so functions. Uh, so check out our playlist here, graphs of polynomial functions, and go to the uh, videos that are talking about finding the x-intercepts, all right? Every problem is explained in, in very much detail, so it should make a lot of sense. I'm gonna kind of run through it here. Remember the first goal here is that I have to find common factors, the greatest common factor amongst each of these three terms. And why am I doing that? Well, the reason why I'm doing that is because, well, this none of this is in factored form. So I have to try to factor it, right? So what I'm realizing is that, well, 4, 12, and 9, they don't have any real common terms, right? But I realize that I have x's in common, so the highest factor is going to be x cubed. So that's what I'm going to pull out of each uh, term, x cubed. Then what you can do to figure out what's left is just divide this by the, whatever you pulled out. So when you do this, it's 5 minus 3 because you're going to subtract the exponents when you divide, and therefore it's going to be 4x squared. Then it's going to be minus now. So here you have 12 divided by x cubed. Remember, 4 minus 3 is 1, so therefore it's going to be 12x to the first, but you don't have to write the first. And then plus just 9, just 9, right? Because x cubed divided by x cubed is just going to be a value of 1. And the reason why is because 3 divided minus 3, right, is 0, but anything raised to the 0 power is just 1. I don't care if you don't know what it is. It's always going to be 1 because that's the rule. So, okay, so we have a factor here. Uh, we don't really have a factor here, uh, but what we do realize is that basically I have to now factor this. Now, this is a quadratic, okay? Now, in order to figure out your factors here, and this should work out, all you have to do, right, all you have to do, I'm just going to rewrite this. So remember, your factors are going to be something like this. They're binomials, right? Where you have some a value, some b value. Oh. Don't, I'm not confusing this with the coefficients, but just some some value here, some value here, some value here, and some value here, okay? Now, what you're going to do to figure out the first two values of each binomial, what you're going to do is you're going to look to your highest coefficient, okay? Coefficient's value, including the, co in, excuse me, highest exponent, including its coefficient, and you're just going to square root it, the whole thing. If you square root this whole thing, what are you left with? Well, square root of 4 is going to be 2. Square root of x squared is going to be x. So in other words, you're left with a 2x. And if you think about this, if you take 2x and multiply it by 2x, if you were to work backwards and FOIL it, 2x times 2x would be equal to 4x squared, and that's why I'm doing it. Now, how do I figure out then this last term? Well, the last term is going to be figured out by thinking about what two values multiply to 9. Now you have two things. You can either It's either going to be 9, positive 9, right, a positive 9, and a positive 1, a negative 9 and a negative 1. You can either, or you can have a positive 3 and a positive 3. Or you can have a negative 3 and a negative 3. And obviously there are more numbers that two numbers when you multiply them equal 9. But these are going to be the only whole numbers, basically. All right? So that's what we're considering. Now, one of these four combinations is going to be the right answer. Now, from here, it's a little harder to kind of, because you can't, you might say, oh, well, don't we just think about what adds to negative 12? Well, do any of these add to negative 12 when you add 9, right? No, that's going to be positive 10. This is negative 10. This is positive 9. And there's going to be negative 9. So none of them add to this term. So what you have to try to do is you, I, I think of it this way, is like you just do a little guessing. You know, you do a little guessing. Let's say you're going to plug in, uh, you know that it has to be overall negative, right? You know that when you add the terms together, though, they better be negative. So you can basically get rid of this one and you can get rid of this one. So now you're down to a 50-50 and you just do a little guess and check on this, honestly. So what you do is, let's say hypothetically you think it's 3, okay? And it has to be negative 3, so just get rid of the positive signs. So now what you do is just work just work backwards, more or less. You know, when you take 2x and then multiply it by the 2x, you get your 4x squared. When you then take your 2x and multiply it by negative 3, what do you get? You get negative 6x, right? You get negative 6x. And then when you take negative 3 and multiply it by 2x, you get, oh, again, a negative 6x, right? And then when you were to take the negative 3 multiply by the negative 3, that's when you would get the positive 9. So you notice how these two terms add up to be negative 12x, 
Now, honestly, I just simply chose negative three. I really didn't. I actually want to choose the one that didn't work first to show you what happens if it didn't work. All you would do, let's say you chose this one first. I really wasn't thinking ahead. I just, I literally had a 50 50. Um, but if you chose this one first, all that would have happened is you would have said, oh, I'm wrong. So it must be this one. Okay. So you really don't have to do more work. But those would be now the values there. All right. So let me just. Let me just back out of all this and I'm going to plug in now my values of negative three and negative three. Okay. So now since these terms are identical, I want to combine them into one. And the reason why is because that's going to allow me to highlight my multiplicity. So it's going to be two X minus three squared, right? Because I can combine these two. Now, all we have to do from here is just some basic and very simple algebra to find the zeros. All we're going to do is break each of these up and set them equal to zero. Why do we do that? Check out the link in the description below. I will leave you uh, the, the link for the playlist or just search the playlist. All right, either one um, on our channel. So this is going to be 2x minus 3. That's going to be squared and equals 2. You got to take the cube root of both sides here. And obviously the cube root of 0 is going to be just 0. So that's going to leave you with x is equal to 0, right? And then similarly here, you would take the square root of both sides, but obviously the square root of zero is just zero. So you're left with two X minus three is equal to zero. And you might say, well, these didn't really do anything when I'm finding the zeros. Do I need to include them? The answer would be basically no. You don't have to, you can just include the non exponent terms. Okay, meaning what's ever here and here. So add three on both sides then. And you're gonna get now that X, uh, two X is equal to three divide the two on out from both sides, all right? And you're gonna realize that X is gonna be equal to three over two. So these are indeed the zeros. That doesn't even look like a two, does it? Not really. So let's change that. All right, great. So there we go. So these are the zeros, okay? Now to give the multiplicity of each of these zeros, all you have to do is look at the powers, okay? That's all you have to do. So no, so the when you solve for X, is, when you solve for the X intercept value, right? Or the zero value of X equals zero, you used this term right here, and what was the exponent of it? The exponent was three. So guess what the multiplicity is? It's equal to three. It's gonna be the same thing as the exponent of that factor. And that's why I that's why I combine this into a single one, okay? Because now, whatever uh, this zero value that we found came from this factor, and it had a power of two, and therefore that's gonna be the multiplicity, two. And that's all it is. All right, now you found the multiplicities, you found the zeros, and that's really the end of the problem. What you can do though for a little visualization is you can now plot the function if you wanted, 4x raised to the fifth power, all right, minus then 12x raised to the fourth power, and then plus 9x raised to the third. And let's just double check, I get everything in right, it looks pretty good. Go to zoom and then hit standard, let's see where this is coming up, cool. We're gonna zoom in now, go to zoom, hit number two, and there you go. So here's the function. And let's see if it's kind of making sense from what we just calculated. Well, it appears that we have two locations where the function crosses the, uh, or touches the x-axis, right? Right here at zero, the function actually crosses, right? It starts low and then it ends high. It goes above, it starts below and then it goes above that x-axis. Anytime you have an odd multiplicity, it will always have this behavior. And look, when this, the x value of zero, that's where it should have crossed the x-axis. That is correct. And look, the multiplicity is odd. And then over here, we have another uh, zero value, right? Where the function's value is zero, meaning it lies exactly on the x-axis. And look, it does a little bump. It does a little bump a -roo, all right? When it touches and goes, or it bumps, and it doesn't cross, it's always going to be an even multiplicity. Now, why is that the case? Well, guess what? I have a video on that. Check out the link in the description below. If you want to understand why that is, which I highly suggest you do, check it out. Um, but in any case, we can also notice that the value here is about three and a half, uh, three halves, right? Or basically 1.5. So hopefully this now kind of makes sense. So all from the algebra, you can understand the behavior of the graph. And to make it fully make sense, if you look at that video of why odd multiplicities produce such behavior and even multiplicities produce such behavior, I think it'll make even more sense. So guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope these videos help you out. And if they do, show a little love. Like, subscribe, hit those buttons, and even better, maybe recommend our channel to your friends, all right? And even not, maybe maybe not even your friends, right? Just some strangers in class. Hey, if you recommend our channel, you might even become friends, right? That would be cool. <laughs> Thanks again. I'll see you soon. Take care.